Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys Crypt's Crafting Guide for Saviors of Uldum. And before I get started, I want to give you guys a gigantic, colossal, massive disclaimer that even though the meta is relatively uh, solved, fixated, whatever you want to call it. We haven't received the first big balance patch and in the last year or so of Hearthstone, the devs from Hearthstone have been pretty aggressive in pushing out this patch as soon as possible. We might get this tomorrow, we might get this next week. It's coming, it'll probably change the game a little bit and there's some chance that this list won't be quite as accurate after that. Now, with that said, I don't believe they're going to nerf any of these cards but we will have to see and I'll give you guys a few thoughts along the way. So what are the best and most played and highest win rate cards in this expansion? First off, Ziliax. That's right. Ziliax, even though it is starting to age, it will be cycling out of standard, uh, you know, a little bit sooner than the expansion that we just received. Um, Ziliax is still king of the ring. He's still the most played, highest win rate on average, and he's a neutral legendary. If you don't have Ziliax and you intend to play Hearthstone somewhat competitively until the first expansion of 2020, he is your man. He is your best craft and, uh, uh, no regrets really there. I don't believe they're going to nerf him. People don't really hate going up against Ziliax. He's the only heal you're going to get in most decks these days, and he's just super good. Number two, Zephyrs. That's right. Zephyrs, Zephyrs, Zephyrs. I don't know how else you want to call him. He's amazing. Really amazing. And more than that, it's really fun to play him. It's just so cool to have the perfect card and to engineer the situation so the game delivers you the perfect card, turns in advance, as I've mentioned in a video last week. Should give you some insight on why he is so amazing. I've started to use Zephyrs in non-Highlander decks where I can either, you know, draw enough of my cards or I just have a few key duplic duplicates and I can play him most often when I need. He's an elemental so you can search for him with the elemental draw minion. It's just, he's just so cool, so amazing. High win rate, high skill card. If you play well with Zephyrs, you will be rewarded and playing well, giving you wins is a game I like to play. So Zephyrs is an amazing craft, top craft from this Saviors of Uldum expansion for sure. Now, next up is Siamat. Siamat kind of goes on for the piggyback ride on Zephyrs. Um, a lot of decks that play Zephyrs, that play Highlander, they use the elemental draw mechanic, and Siamat makes the list not because he has a particularly high win rate when played, but because he has a particularly high win rate when included in a deck, and it is largely because of that mechanic because he is an elemental. It's not that Siamat is like the best card ever. He's pretty good, though. He's pretty good. It's just that he's like the best option that we have for a neutral elemental. We might get a better neutral elemental next expansion and see him out, it'll be completely worthless then. But for the time being, he's the one and it's looking pretty good. If you play Zephyr's decks, you're gonna play see him out in a lot of your decks. So why not get him crafted? It's neutral. There's gonna be lots of opportunities to play him. Those neutral cards are really key. Fourth, Leroy Jenkins. No surprise there. This guy doesn't need much of an introduction. Blizzard stopped making cards with charge, yet Leroy is not Hall of Famed quite yet. So here we are charging in and he has an exceptionally high win rate. Who would have thought yet again? Tortolan Pilgrim is the first non-neutral card on my list. This card has an extremely high win rate. Yes, it's tied to Mage. Yes, there's a good chance that Mage in some way is going to receive some nerfs, but there's so many different type of Mage decks and you will see Tortolan Pilgrim in nearly all of them because he is so crazy. If you play generally big spells, and in Mage, big spells are generally worth playing, Tortolan Pilgrim is one of the single best eight drops in the whole game and I love it. This card is so cool, it's so great, and it encompasses what playing mage I think should be. Big spells, big plays, with some planning, and a little bit of RNG mixed in. King Feoris is a neutral legendary once again. His win rate is not quite as high as all the other cards that I mentioned, but he's neutral. Um, right now he's seeing play in a number of mage decks, he's seeing play in a number of quest druid decks, and he's seeing play in a number of resurrect priest decks. Now, res priest and quest druid are not tier one decks at this very moment, but they're 
fairly competitive. You're talking about tier two-ish. Quest Druid, depending on the version, might be like a top tier three deck. They're pretty good decks. You're gonna get some use out of them. So if you like playing with King Theorus, if you like playing those specific classes and wanna explore maybe putting him into other decks in the future, King Theorus might be the one for you. Next up, Armageddlo. This guy is pretty good, as it turns out, but once again, he's tied into Control Warrior, though maybe not entirely. It's possible that just Taunt Warrior without the whole mech package and Doctor Room and stuff is still gonna be a very competitive tier two deck if they end up nerfing the Doctor Room hero card, which my guess is that they will. But right now, he's absolutely insane. He's one of the best cards in the best deck in the game, Control Warrior, and I think even through some nerfs, uh, that deck is not quite going away. So if you like Taunts, if you like Control Warrior, Armageddon is your guy. Next up is Micro Mummy. Micro Mummy is played in Quest Paladin. Quest Paladin is a tier two deck right now, um, but it is heavily uh, played because of Control Warrior. Uh, Quest Paladin is a pretty good deck against everything else, but against Control Warrior, it is 80% plus win rate when played correctly. Quest Paladin is out of control good against Control Warrior. The issue is possibly Control Warrior might get nerfed, with a lot fewer people playing Control Warrior, there might not be much of a need to ever play Quest Paladin. But regardless, Micro Mummy is the best reborn minion in the game right now. Uh, it's also a mech, uh, and it's an early game card that can be searched for in the Paladin deck. This guy does everything, and he is unstoppable. If you play Paladin and you don't have this guy, think about getting him. Anubisoft Defender makes the list number nine. Um, he's just very good. You're gonna see him in basically every single Druid deck in the next two years that has more than three spells over five mana. And that might just be every single Druid deck in the next two years. So why not? If you're a Druid player, safe craft right there. Last one, just barely making the list, is Vulpera Scoundrel. Now, this card does not have a very high win rate, but out of the new cards, there's not a lot other than the list that I just mentioned that really makes much of a cut. There's not much of a reason to craft anything else. If you're playing a lot of Zephyr's decks, you're gonna end up playing a number of Vulperas, and it's a neutral card. It's gonna find its way into some decks. I don't think it's like the best card ever, but it sees some play. And if it sees some play and you're playing those type of decks, it's a pretty safe craft for that reason alone. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.